Hello everyone. I'm going to be a bit more slow and dramatic today. I really thought I was a little too excited in my past two videos, so just kidding! <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to my Black History Month project of 28 movies in 28 days. I can't contain myself, I'm so sorry. I can't be dramatic and quiet, I have to, I'm so excited about this. So, my name's Loma, otherwise known as Loma Licious, Lomita, or my grandson calls me Momo, and you can call me Momo too. I'm a proud grandma, so I don't care what you call me. Anyway, so we're going back to 1921 and I am dressed for the occasion. Although I did buy this dress as a dress that I would wear today. Um, I bought it before the pandemic, but I haven't worn it and actually I don't like it at all. So I probably won't be wearing it except for this vlog. And uh, I kind of decorated behind me like a old typewriter and radio and a picture I painted of myself in uh, kind of like a Victorian garb. But anyway, we're going back to 1921. Did I say 1921? Um, and I'm sorry I'm so excited and happy in these videos. It's just because I've been wanting to do this for like such a long time and I'm finally doing it. Okay, let me get to the point here. I don't want this video to be too long because I don't want to bore you, but we are talking today about a community in Tulsa, Oklahoma called Black Wall Street. It's a, the community of Greenwood. Um, and um, so basically Black Wall Street was a thriving community. They owned businesses, um, theaters, the grocery stores. Um, they owned everything, okay? This was their community. They were rich. They had m mansions. They, they were millionaires. They even began to form their own government which the surrounding communities did not like. And you know, in 1921, if you were a white person, would you like to see that a black community is thriving? What? And then there could be more of them kind of, they could expand their land and their, their businesses and, and even more and more and maybe take over all of America. Okay, so let me calm down a bit, but that was the fear. And that was the underlying reason of why this massacre happened. So. If you look back in the history books, they like to refer to it as the Tulsa Race Riots. It was not a riot, people. It was a massacre. So this is why I'm recommending this nine-minute uh, uh, quick documentary discussion about um, this. Because when I researched a lot of the th online, I was looking for different things to watch about it. They really, really misrepresent and misinform you as to what really happened. I saw some that were just unbelievable that, you know, the black people started this massacre. Really? Like, they're really going to want to start trouble um, because you know that white people have all the power in the States, especially in 1921. All the lynchings that went on, slavery had, hadn't ended that much long before this. Um, so, it, well, slavery was still happening anyway. So, okay. Anyway, otherwise known as, you know, other stuff, Jim Crow and all that stuff, but we will get into that. And I'm definitely going to have a separate topic about um, Jim Crow and the minstrel stereotypes that came out, like, uh, you know, uh, the mammy stereotype, the Uncle Tom, the, um, the buck. The Buck. Not many people know about The Buck. The Buck, it was uh, categorized as a, the strong black man, the Mandingo man, who was um, strong and he was the one that could do all the heavy work as a slave, but he also was known as the scary black man who wanted to rape white women. So, or Zip Coon, Zip Coon. Oh man, there is so much to get into. I'm actually gonna do a separate thing just on those things alone because it really shows us the stereotypes that we still carry today into society. But we'll get into all that stuff. So basically, let me get right to it. Basically, um, the Greenwood community was kind of a boiling pot, right? Because when you think about it, if there's surrounding communities that aren't doing so well, when you see a black community thriving and they're millionaires, they're rich, and you're saying, how can they have that home and that land? And I don't. So it was kind of like already a boiling pot for the, you know, white community. And I'm sorry if you feel that I'm really making this a black and white thing, but guess what? It is a black and white thing. So anyway, um, so all it really took was one, was an incident to happen to set this whole thing off and let the pot boil, the lid boil off the pot and for them to bomb and destroy. I call bombing, but b bombing as in setting fire, destroying this whole community and 
They try to say that maybe about only 30 people were killed, but I think it was other people. So, basically, um, there was a young man called Dick Rowland, and this young man, 19-year-old Dick Rowland, went into an elevator, and the elevator operator was a white woman, and her name was Sarah Page, I believe. So, she apparently, he went in the elevator, and then he came running out, and she was screaming. So... We're not sure what exactly happened, but he ran, went, went home or whatever. And two days later, they took him into jail because, um, I guess, I don't, we don't know what happened. And newspapers reported looking for this Negro or get this Negro boy or something. Anyway, take a lot of the things in the history, um, in the documents, the historical documents were mysteriously disappeared. Um, like some articles were, you know, when you look back and you go into the archives, some articles were literally ripped out of the newspaper. So I wonder what was ripped out. Anyway, they wanted it to seem like it was a race riot. And I researched some documentaries and honestly, um, they were so um, mis, not misinformed, they misinformed people. They were. It was wrong information. They basically were saying that the black people had started these race riots when it wasn't that at all. So I'll just tell you really quickly, this video is already going way too long, but um, so basically the young man was arrested. Um, we still don't know what happened um, in that elevator, but he was arrested and um, that is when the mob started to form in front of the courthouse demanding he get lynched. The black community said, we cannot let this happen again to one of our young men. He was 19 years old. We will not let this happen. So they decided to go to the courthouse to help protect him because they were trying, the white uh, lynch mob was trying to break down the courthouse doors to get to him so that they basically, they um, went out to protect. And that's when the fighting started. I guess two men got into a fight, a gun went off and all hell broke loose. Literally went into people's homes, burning, setting their homes on fire with people inside and destroyed, burned that community to the ground. And the people that were in that community had to leave up and leave and had to leave with nothing. So that's basically the Tulsa um massacre so there's a lot more to the story please i hope you can watch the the little documentary i will share um it's only nine minutes long it's a great discussion starter um into this uh the story um so you know it's very dangerous for black men out there especially when they're accused um and they have to uh, face uh, the police so the story's not new um so this basically was an attack on a whole community, again, due to a fact of a white woman um, accusing a young black man of, we don't know, and uh, this is what ended up happening to this community. I hope you have a good night, and I will end as I came in on a somber note. Try to be dramatic, and um, please, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. And, uh, and please check it out, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good night.